Chapter 22 The Death of Moses. This chapter is based on Deuteronomy chapters 31 to 34. Moses was soon to die, and he was commanded to gather the children of Israel together before his death and relate to them all the journeyings of the Hebrew host since their departure from Egypt, and all the great transgressions of their fathers, which brought his judgments upon them, and compelled him to say that they should not enter the promised land. Their fathers had died in the wilderness according to the word of the Lord. Their children had grown up, and to them the promise was to be fulfilled of possessing the land of Canaan. Many of these were small children when the law was given, and they had no remembrance of the grandeur of the event. Others were born in the wilderness, and lest they should not realize the necessity of their obeying the Ten Commandments and all the laws and judgments given to Moses, he was instructed of God to recapitulate the Ten Commandments and all the circumstances connected with the giving of the law. Moses had written in a book all the laws and judgments given him of God, and had faithfully recorded all his instructions given them by the way, and all the miracles which he had performed for them, and all the murmurings of the children of Israel. Moses had also recorded his being overcome in consequence of their murmurings. Final Instruction to Israel All the people were assembled before him, and he read the events of their past history out of the book which he had written, He read also the promises of God to them if they would be obedient, and the curses which would come upon them if they were disobedient. Moses told them that for their rebellion the Lord had several times purposed to destroy them, but he had interceded for them so earnestly that God had graciously spared them. He reminded them of the miracles which the Lord did unto Pharaoh and all the land of Egypt. He said to them, But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that you may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whither you go to possess it. Deuteronomy 11, verses 7 and 8. Moses especially warned the children of Israel against being seduced into idolatry. He earnestly charged them to obey the commandments of God. If they would prove obedient and love the Lord and serve Him with their undivided affections, He would give them rain in due season, and cause their vegetation to flourish and increase their cattle. They should also enjoy a special and exalted privileges, and should triumph over their enemies. Moses instructed the children of Israel in an earnest, impressive manner. He knew that it was his last opportunity to address them. He then finished writing in a book all the laws, judgments, and statutes which God had given him, also the various regulations respecting sacrificial offerings. He placed the book in the hands of men in the sacred office and requested that, for safe keeping, it should be put in the side of the ark, for God's care was continually upon that sacred chest. This book of Moses was to be preserved, that the judges of Israel might refer to it if any case should come up to make it necessary. An erring people often understand God's requirements to suit their own case. Therefore, the book of Moses was preserved in a most sacred place for future reference. Moses closed his last instructions to the people by a most powerful prophetic address. It was pathetic and eloquent. By inspiration of God, he blessed separately the tribes of Israel. In his closing words, he dwelt largely upon the majesty of God and the excellency of Israel, which would ever continue if they would obey God and take hold of his strength. The Decease and Resurrection of Moses And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zoar. 
And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses the servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. And Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died, and his eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Deuteronomy 34, verses 1 through 7. It was not the will of God that anyone should go up with Moses to the top of Pisgah. There he stood upon a high prominence on Pisgah's top, in the presence of God and heavenly angels. After he had viewed Canaan to his satisfaction, he lay down like a tired warrior to rest. Sleep came upon him, but it was the sleep of death. Angels took his body and buried it in the valley. The Israelites could never find the place where he was buried. His secret burial was to prevent the people from sinning against the Lord by committing idolatry over his body. Satan exulted that he had succeeded in causing Moses to sin against God. For this transgression Moses came under the dominion of death. If he had continued faithful, and his life had not been marred with that one transgression, in failing to give God the glory of bringing water from the rock, he would have entered the promised land, and would have been translated to heaven without seeing death. Michael, or Christ, with the angels that buried Moses, came down from heaven after he had remained in the grave a short time and resurrected him and took him to heaven. As Christ and the angels approached the grave, Satan and his angels appeared at the grave and were guarding the body of Moses, lest it should be removed. As Christ and his angels drew nigh, Satan resisted their approach, but was compelled by the glory and power of Christ and his angels to fall back. Satan claimed the body of Moses because of his one transgression, but Christ meekly referred him to his father, saying, The Lord rebuke thee. Jude 1, verse 9. Christ told Satan that he knew Moses had humbly repented of this one wrong, that no stain rested upon his character, and that his name in the heavenly book of records stood untarnished. Then Christ resurrected the body of Moses, which Satan had claimed. At the transfiguration of Christ, Moses and Elijah, who had been translated, were sent to talk with Christ in regard to his sufferings, and to be the bearers of God's glory to his dear Son. Moses had been greatly honored of God. He had been privileged to talk with God face to face, as a man speaketh with his friend. And God had revealed to him his excellent glory, as he had never done to any other. 